series can be assembled into a data frame using two straightforward methods. The first uses a list of series and treats each series as a row. The second uses a dictionary where the key value pairs are used as columns. Pandas supports more advanced methods to coalesce data frames in series, including concatenation and SQL-like merge and join statements. We won't cover these in detail since they are not required for the course. Open the notebook in Visual Studio Code. The first block loads the variables created in the past assignment. This is done to simplify each lesson into a set of small, easily digestible concepts. We need to run this cell to load the data before moving on to the first problem. If we take a look at the Variable Explorer, we see that the series and data frame have both been loaded. We can drill down into the prices data frame and see that this is the same data that we entered in a previous lesson. There are two basic methods available to build a data frame from a series. The first uses a list of series, and each series corresponds to a row. Each series name is extracted to produce the index. The column names of the data frame are extracted from the index of the series in the list. While this approach appears limited, since series are always treated as rows, the transpose operator, dot t, can be used to swap the rows and columns of a data frame. The first problem asks us to construct a data frame from the one-day series created in the previous lesson. A series is a 1D array and so is like a list of values. When we construct a data frame from a list of series, this is like constructing a data frame from a list of lists, and so each of the series in the list is treated as a row. Here we use a basic data frame constructor to create the data frame from the series. If we leave Price's row as the bottom line of the cell, we can take a look at its contents. The data frame's index is still the default, and so we need to change it. We can then insert the index by assigning to the index attribute of the data frame Price's row. This is equivalent to assigning the index when we create the data frame. Running the cell again shows that our data frame is now using the dates as the index values. The next problem asks us to create the same data frame from the series that contain a single ticker but all of the dates. We can use the basic data frame constructor here. This treats each of the three series as rows and so we will get a data frame with three rows and 12 columns. We can take a look at this data frame by leaving it as the last value in the cell. We want the tickers to be in columns, and so we need to transpose the data frame. This is a matrix transpose. In a data frame, the transpose swaps both the data and the index and column labels. Note that we didn't need to provide the index or the columns here, since each of the series has a name, which is used as the index, that is before the transpose, and the columns after, and they all have dates on their index. These are merged across the three series when the data frame is created. If we take a look at the difference, we see that it's all zero. Data frames can also be constructed from dictionaries. In this format, each key value pair is used to fill a column. The keys are used as column names, and the values, that is the series, provide the data for each column. In most applications of this structure, the series should have matching indices. The final problem asks us to use a dictionary to construct a data frame. This method uses a Python dictionary where the keys are the column names and the values are the column's content. Here we use the tickers as keys and their corresponding series as contents. Unlike the previous problem, there is no need to transpose the output here. We can take a look at Price's dict by entering it on the final line of the cell.
Taking a look at the difference, we can see this version also matches the original data frame. We've seen two methods to build data frames from series. The first uses a list and each series is treated as a row in the new data frame. The second uses a dictionary where key value pairs are used as column names and column data. We also saw the transpose operator, dot t, that transposes the data frame by swapping the rows and columns as well as the index and column names. 